lies and tricks in the form of knowledge. And it will be called Christianity to hide Judaism, the real dirty religion of the Ashkenazans and the Sephardians of Russia and from Spain. That's what they're talking about. And with that, I become Ishmael <laughs> because Ishmael was the uncle of Jacob. <laughs> so what Master Prophet Muhammad was saying, I came in North America by myself. The Ishmaelites were brought over here by a trader 379 years ago. They don't even know the Ishmaelites. <laughs> now the funny part comes in. Can an Israelite, can an Ishmaelite be an Israelite? Yes. Yes. Has to be. Are Midianites Israelites? Yes. Are Edomites Israelites? Oh yes. How does Ishmaelites become Israelites? The same way Manasseh and Ephraim became Israelites. Manasseh and Ephraim were the sons of Yusuf, Joseph, correct? And married an Egyptian woman, correct? And had two sons. And Jacob welcomed them in the covenant of Israel and they became known, though they were Manassehites and Ephraimites, they still were known as Israelites. Well, Hagar was an Egyptian and she married Abraham, the father. And she had a son named Ishmael, correct? And therefore, Ishmael is a... And Muhammad then, being a descendant through the Quraysh, to Kedah, to Nebajot, to Nebat, all the way back to Ishmael becomes a... Muslims are Israelites and don't even know it. The Quran speaks about them as being people of the book, right? Now the Muslims separate that, say, people of the book are the Israelites and we're the Muslims. But they say in the Quran, Muhammad, who we find mentioned in the book, <laughs> in the Torah. So if Muhammad is in the Torah, then Muhammad is a person of the... And if we follow Muhammad, then we are people of the... And the people of the book are Israelites, then Israelites and Israelites are... Saints. So Master Farah Muhammad was saying, <laughs> I came to North America by myself. My uncle, meaning the Israelites or Ishmaelites, <laughs> were brought over here by a slave trader 379 years ago. Now we're coming to the 400th year of the prophecy of Genesis chapter 15. So it says, to know of a surety that my seed will be in a land as strangers, and they shall serve and be afflicted for... But then after that, what's going to happen? That's right. We're going into the 400th year. We're starting to align back in with the universe. <coughs> you understand? No, yeah, no, no. Say no. Say no. I don't understand, Maboni. I overstand now. I was understanding for too long. Now I overstand. It's time. It's wake up time. It is time to wake up. Shake it. You can go against anybody with what I've been teaching you. And I'm not asking you to like me, like the teachings. You can go against anybody. You can stand and hold your own against anybody, and most of y'all have tried it and know it works. <laughs> Christian preacher, Christian teacher, Mohammedan, Sunni, Ahmadiyya, Wahhabi, Baha'i, Buddhist, anybody can stand against truth, and it's only going to get heavier this year. Because <laughs> now you're going to come and you're going to be speaking words of overstanding because we got the right knowledge you got to assimilate that knowledge with your wisdom and then you got to move on to have an overstanding Islam was the knowledge and y'all are the best Muslims they were ain't no Muslim women were walking around with bells on their faces and holes in their noses were they? unless they were copying off us and didn't want to admit it we're the only ones that live strict we made the hundred raka'ah for Nifsa Mina Shaban. No Sunnis was doing it. <coughs> you couldn't get them. You go to State Street or Taqwa or Ikra, and on the night of them niggas over there smoking cigarettes outside talking. <laughs> <laughs> Not their fault. It's just their wrong knowledge. They've been made to hate their own savior. That happened in Israel. It happened in Egypt. It happened when Moses got ready to get out of Egypt. His own people started hating their own savior, Moses. You may not like me, but I'm here to save you. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to teach you anyway. And if, if, they, if they kill this body, that's your fault. I'm not going to duck. 
I'm not going to stand in front of the gun, but I'm not going to duck. If you want the knowledge to keep coming to you, then you protect it. Plain and simple. But I'm not the type of person who won't get in my car and drive away without bodyguards. That's the kind of person I am. Now, you can follow me if you feel like. I don't mind. But don't get in my way. Because I believe that when it's time, it's time. And that may be the wrong belief, but I just happen to believe that. I wish I knew. <laughs> but no one knows that but Allah. No one knows that I and David him. But I do know this, that this is a time for right knowledge. If I want a question asked, I'll let you have it. Let me talk. Right? If you show me in the Quran where it says I should stand in Qiyam and bow in Wukul, I'll do it. I can show you in the Quran where it says stand and raise your hands. I can show you in the Quran where it says prostrate to the ground. I can't show you Jussel and you can't show it to me. It was necessary for you to go through that school because we were the wild ass of a man. You understand? We had no discipline. And the Nation of Islam did not give us the kind of discipline necessary to raise a nation. Otherwise, the moment the Honorable Elijah Muhammad died, it wouldn't have fell apart. There has to be a strong foundation put there. Y'all now have the discipline. I'll tell you something, a lot of you men who was in the community for years, under what I was teaching you, under the lifestyle that you had to live. You say, I don't know why I got to live like this. I don't know why I got to put up with this. You can stand anything now. <laughs> Any pressure they put you under, you go work with somebody else and the people working with you want to fire, get you fired. Because that nigga don't know when he don't stop and take breaks. He don't smoke. He ain't drinking no sodas. Y'all right? Right. can outwork any group of people on the planet right now. Because I was building a, I was building an imaginary pyramid. I was saying sleep on the floor. Say there's rats in there, so. So what, what's wrong with rats? They might bite you. Then don't get bit. <laughs> there's always somebody that gets bit. Why it gotta be you? <laughs> Say there's no heat, so. There's too much heat, so. I subjected y'all to everything that you can go through to make you ready to stand whatever comes against us. Because I don't need, can I speak here? I don't need the bitchin' men. I really don't need the bitchin' men. Because the devil is going to make up his mind to come after us one day. It's written in the law. He's going to try to climb Mount Zion to destroy us, the Holy Tabernacle. You understand? And I don't need men that are going to break down like little girls. I made brothers walk the streets and pedal, but anybody who knows the beginning know I walked the streets and pedaled. They'll tell you I used to walk them to death. <laughs> anybody, talk to any old time, and they say, that guy is nuts. He'd walk us from, I'd walk them from Coney Island to the Bronx. I'm not exaggerating. Every day. And on the way back, I'd stop off at a kosher restaurant and say, we're going to split this bowl of pea soup. <laughs> Is that true? Right. And take all the money and give it to the sisters. Right. Say, later, and we left the sisters there with the money and we took off again. Oh. And we walked again <laughs> from Brook, from Coney Island to Staten Island to Far Rockaway, <laughs> out to Hempstead, and all the way back. And on the way back, we stopped. And they say, can we get something to eat? I say, yeah, we'll get a little soup and a little extra. And the man, they be like, yeah, I say, give me a little coleslaw, please. <laughs> and they say,